to represent. So it was something that I've always been uh, interested in and something that I wanted to do. And especially uh, my dad's side of the family, all being from here, it's, uh, it's a place that's close to home. So, you know, it's, it's always an honor every time I get called up. Just second generation Barbie, you know, where, where are you from, uh, where are you based? Yeah, so I'm based in the States, uh, born and raised in Delaware, about 30 minutes south of Philadelphia. Uh, been playing there ever since I was three. Uh, my dad was my first coach, and then uh, I became a goalkeeper probably around age 11, age 12. I, funny story, I actually had, a, I had asthma growing up, and I couldn't keep up with the field players, so they decided to stick me in goal, and it kind of just stuck. And, as I got older, I loved the pressure of the position. I loved the, uh, you know, be able to make the save or be the hero in a sense. And it's always something that I've really enjoyed doing. And, you know, I know the pressure comes with it, but I, I take it every every time, no problem. Okay, you said your dad's Barbie and he was your first coach. Talk to a little bit about him. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, what to say about him. He's a great, great guy, unbelievable. Um, he wasn't a big soccer or football player himself. I think he was more of a cricket man. Uh, but he always supported me with everything that I did. And he would take me to and from practices and games on the weekends, as, long as, as, as well as my mom, uh, just to fuel my passion. And I, I, I remember I was younger, I always get mad if I wasn't an hour early to practice. You know, I always, I hated showing up on time. I always had to be an hour early so I can kick around um, and do stuff like that on my own. And, you know, as I got older, um, you know, gave me the opportunity to, you know, advance my career. and traveled a little bit. I usually used to travel sometimes from 45 minutes up to an hour and a half to training from Pennsylvania, from Delaware, and, you know, always supported me, always, you know, kept me uh, on my toes and, you know, make sure my schoolwork was done on top of, you know, playing well, and just when the opportunity came to make sure that I was ready to take it, so, yeah, it was overall just great. It was a great experience growing up. Can you say you've, uh, you, you, you got that big chance that you were always hoping for to play? For Barbados, when you became professional, tell us a little bit about your professional career. Who you played for? Yeah, so I've traveled a little bit um, going into my fourth year professionally. Um, I started out with the New York Cosmos in 2015. Uh, then I ended up, uh, that was in the NASL, and then I ended up in Harrisburg City Islanders for 2016 in the USL. And then last year I was with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds in the USL as well. And it's been it's been fun. It's a dream that I've always had. I always wanted growing up, uh, playing professionally is everything and all I ever wanted to do. Um, and it's been an experience that it's playing professionally has gave, gave me an opportunity to see the world and see places that I probably normally wouldn't see if I wasn't playing this sport. And I've made some great relationships along the way and very, you know, blessed and happy to be where I am right now. And I know the work's not done yet, but I have to continue to keep going on and uh, do well for Barbados and also at the club level as well. Okay, you're Barbados' is number one um, goalkeeper. Tell us about that first cap. Um, when was it? How, what was it? What was he feeling? What was he thinking? Like? It was. Um, it was against Aruba, uh, second round of qualifying, uh, June tenth, twenty fifteen. I'll never forget that. Day. <laughs> <Clearly>. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. It was. Um, it's like it's like growing up, and especially living in the states, they always highlighted the U.S. men's national team all the time, and you know the men would walk out and you hear the anthem, and I was like, oh, how cool would that be to you know play the walk out of that tunnel and. When I when I got the call that I was gonna be my first game, I mean, I had endless nerves. I mean, I I, I was probably I sweat when I'm nervous, and I probably sweat it <laughs> ten times more than I usually do. Um, but it was great. It was a it was a great experience. Um, we went to Aruba, even down a man. We we won two nothing, and to get a clean sheet in the first, first win game. in the first in the first game was something I'll never forget. And. Ever since then, it's just been a dream so far. So how important is a 12-man family and friends? Unbelievable. Play? Yeah, uh, no matter at home or away, you know, knowing that family here and also family back home in the States is watching and supporting mm -hmm. means the world to me, you know. It also puts me, get a little, not too much pressure, but always make sure that I play well, that I don't mess up and embarrass them back home. So that's the, that's the main thing. But no, I, I, it's, uh, it's huge. It's huge. The support is huge. My whole family has been supporting me ever since. I was young, and they follow my career, and always come to my games. However, time every time that I'm close to home, so it's been good, it's been really good. Traditionally, the man in the bars has a bit more longevity in the game. <laughs> you know, um, how long do you want to be representing the Billy Young Dog? So I can't walk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I literally, I mean, I, this is something that I love to do, and any time that I ever get the call up, I'm never going to say no. You know, this is something that. Uh, I think I can help, you know, not just the team, but, you know, the Federation as much as I can. Uh, it's, a, it's something that 
I've always will I've always will enjoy coming down here. Um, and as long as I'm able to play and long able to put the boots on and put the gloves on, I'm always willing to come down, without a doubt. Okay, well, as you know, we have the Scotiabank National Youth Cup. Mm -hmm. So those are mainly the under 17s and the 11s, 15s, and 9s. And there are a lot of young goalkeepers out there. What do you have to say to anyone who wants to be a young goalkeeper or a young player out there who wants to be professional? So what would you say to a young virgin yourself? Yeah, um, going back 20 years, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I would say to uh, the youth growing up, like it's it's a it's a long it's a hard and long road. Mm -hmm. um, once you get an opportunity, you have to take it. But that preparation, you have to be prepared, getting ready for that opportunity. And sometimes you don't know when that phone call or that email or that opportunity is going to come. But you always have to be ready. And when you are ready, make sure that you blow the minds of whoever's watching. And um, you know, always and have fun. That's the main thing. You know, have fun while you're doing it. You know, if you're enjoying your football, you're enjoying playing and being with your mates and having fun. Like that's the main thing, especially at a young age. And you'll grow, you'll develop, and you'll get better. And that's part of the whole process and being patient. But I think right now, especially for the younger generation, is having fun and enjoying it. And then once you're a hundred percent, you know that this is one of what you want to do. Commit your entire life to it. So it's not just a part time thing. It's a every day. This is my life. Like you know, I'm here to get better. I'm here to take care of my body. I'm here to you know do the right things on and off the field that will make me a better person and a professional growing up. Okay. Where do you see yourself first of all in the next five to ten years, and then when you hang out your gloves, what what do you what do you intend to do? Five to ten years playing wise, or yeah, five to ten years. Playing yeah. Wise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I'm, I'm honestly uh i'm hoping to still be playing at least for another 10 at least another 10 years uh you know traveling is something that i definitely enjoy doing uh i, I love flights you know i love just seeing new places so you know i definitely enjoy the the i guess the travel part of it that's fun and then you know we're getting ready for another world cup cycle pretty soon you know that the league of nations starts in september and I tell you, I can't wait for that. You know, we're, we got some two tough away games at Guyana, a place I've never been before. Mm -hmm. And then I've been to El Salvador, so that will be a very tough match for us. You know, the, it's a very hostile environment there. You know, it'll be a big crowd, you know, very good team as well that we'll be playing. So that'll be a good challenge for us. And, you know, I think the men will be ready. We'll get the proper preparation. And then coming home, play the USVI and Nicaragua. You know, I think that'll be two good matches that I think we have to take six points from. Um, but yeah, we're looking long term, just continue to play. And then once I'm done playing, you know, for me, coaching is something that I love to do. Uh, I've been coaching for the last couple of years at uh, universities back in the States, and I've also had my own goalkeeper, you know, academy back home as well that I do in my offseason. For the young kids, probably from like, I think nine to 16, 17, you know, and it's grown every year, so I'm proud of that, and it keeps getting better. And to be honest, I would love to have something like that here, you know, to have the youth the keepers come out and run a session, you know, and really kind of help develop, you know, the next wave of goalkeepers mm -hmm. coming through Barbados. And hopefully they can, you know, leave the island and go pro or even go to school in the States or overseas. I think that would be huge as well. You know, get a, get that opportunity to get a good education and also, you know, see the world. Let football take you to wherever you want to go and see places that you might not usually see. So I think, yeah, once coaching and then at some point, like a technical director and, you know, just kind of being behind the scenes of it. So, last question, what's your most memorable or emotional memory about being a Barbados national team player? Yeah. Other than the first cap. Other than the course. first cap? Yeah. Like a save that you, you know is defining you so far? Uh, so many? No, no, well, defense has done well, so I don't have to do too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Because it was hard to get pictures of you yesterday. It was like, we get the yeah, ball to you. That's, and it's like, I got to give credit to the guys in front of me. You know, they're, they've organized and they work very hard to make sure that it can make my life a lot easier, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got to give those guys credit. Um, so no declining moments right now. To be, to be honest, I think the biggest save that I had that's most, that sticks out to me there was one save I did in the, in the first cap that I had against the Roomba. There was one save that I had. Ball got the low, kind of low service cross near post. Guy got a head on it. 
and I just kind of stuck out my hand and it went around the post to the outside and we were already down to 10 men at that point so being down get having a goal come back would have been kind of crucial and their kind of come back but I think that was a huge save um, I think there was maybe one or two breakaways that we played at Dominican Republic that I remember, I can remember the first half we kind of got battered a little bit but uh, I think that save in the Ruba, I think the first the first leg was that save was probably the biggest save that I had so far okay. just key moment wise that's it. That's been it. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Well, 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 well. Appreciate it. Thank you.